Are you ready? Yeah. I'll have to put this out here. Because the pattern that we're doing today has a pig in it. And my little pink apron. This is really good, just in case Brenda didn't give me a hat to wear. I had to have one. They were going to do the apron, and I love my apron, and I love my Irish. But we have to do this because the block is called Pig's Pig's Tail. How could you tell? Pig's Tail. Do I have a good one? Yes, I do. It's too straight. Oh, I'm curling it as we speak. The Pig's Tail. All right, it's very cute. And I think that you have the patterns that just came, right? Oh, so we have to, we have to hand out the patterns. So, it's just two fabrics. Some of you already know another name for it. Snail's Trail, right? Snail's Trail. And there's another name for it. Another name for it. It was, it was actually... Um, from Mountain Mist. It was, um, this pattern was named by Mountain Mist, and here it is in the Mountain Mist book. And another name for it is the Virginia Reel. Oh no, we're going to have to dance. All of us. Unless you'd rather be a pig. No? Oink, a pig. I think it's kind of really fun. So it, it was a mountain mist pattern, but here it is in the print, and this is the one that Teresa did in the batik. Is that nice? Very nice. Very nice. And then I did this one in 12 inch, just two fabrics. Aww. Is that beautiful? Pig's tail. And then this is the one that Teresa did in the batiks. The pig's tail. So it just really starts in the middle and just keeps on winding all around. And when Mountain Mist did it, they suggested that you put a solid color together with it. So, so we cut a whole bunch of these blocks and watch. Whenever you set it together with a solid square. So see, whoever is going to make the quilt for the design wall, you already have your idea. <laughs> yeah. I'm too funny. No thinking required. I really like that. That looks really nice. I love this fabric. I can't wait to use it. Okay, so I'm going to put, let's put some of these up here. So Eric has a nice wall. That's a good one. And we'll put the six inch beside it. Oh, And then we'll do the 12 inch in the print. And the yellow. I had to do it in blue and yellow so I could follow my directions. <laughs> and then this is the... Good? Yeah. Easy? Okay, and, and I know you think I'm a genius, but I need directions too. Thank you. <laughs> cool. I like it. All right. So your chart is all. Oh, there's our recipe. Mmm. Pig's tail or pork tenderloin? Okay, I'll take pork tenderloin over pig's tail. Will you take? Do you know? I re I remember whenever I was growing up, I would always go to um, the American Legion. And my dad would always be sitting at the bar, and there was always this huge glass jar of pigs' feet. Yeah. Now, what do pigs' feet? Pickled, 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 pickled pigs' feet. Pickled pigs' feet. So, do you smell the garlic? I'm gonna show you how to do the block, and then I'll show you how to make the make the pork tenderloin. Does that sound good? So sit and just water your mouth. <laughs> okay, so so it's very easy to do. The pig's tail block, um, 
put out by Mountain Mist, and all of the yardage is listed right down there. You only have two fabrics to pick. Yay! Two fabrics, that works really good. And because all of the sizes are the same, except the center square, it goes really fast if you layer your light and your dark on top of each other, and you can just cut your squares as fast as you can. Like that. Or you say, Teresa! <laughs> Everybody needs a Teresa, huh? Yes. And actually, um, the center, it just starts with the center, and you always are cutting one light square and one dark square. One light square and one dark square for every one of them. And Teresa was so nice to me. She already cut every single square on the diagonal. Nice, huh? Yeah. Nice. All right. So I'm just going to start out. You get all your squares cut. And turn the page. Beep. I love this. Okay, you start out with the center. And you take your light. It is a square. Let's see. It's how, what size square? Let's see if you can tell me. What size is it? Two and three fourths. Okay, your square, your center is two and five eighths, and then your um, light is two and three fourths. Cut it on one diagonal. And what I really like to do when I do these, there's a little hint. I need my apron back on. Okay, so I'm just going to take my um, triangles and just fold them and just crease them, okay? And they're going to go on each side like this. It's kind of hard to see the creases, huh? But I like to crease them. And when you lay them like this, I need my apron again. I must have my apron for this little show. Oh, my apron. This is the most important part. It goes with the set. You guys see my apron? See? Because when you lay your triangles out like this, it is very important that you let your tips hang out. You see? They have to hang out equally on both sides. You cannot have uneven tips. Your tips must be equal. So when we do this, think of your apron. All right, stiletto, important. You just use a regular seam. Isn't that good? And you know what? I hate finding the right sides, okay? So um, I matched up the fold, and pretty soon you're not even going to do any folds, right? All you're going to do is just look at it so that the tips are hanging out equally. That's good. Did you put four folds on the, on the square? Uh, not yet. I just did one. Oh, you watching me, Orion, huh? Okay, so all I'm going to do is always sew with the bias on the bottom. Okay, on, bias is on the bottom. That's a one little uh, rule. And the second one is that you let your tips hang out. Now I'm just going to really look at it good. You do. I did the first time. I folded the triangle and I folded the square so that they would be um, centered. But once you start, then you're just going to start looking at the, at the tips and making sure they're equal. Uh huh. Okay, okay, look again. Go real close. Here is a fold. Can you see it? There's a fold. On the other side is a fold. And if we can, oops. <laughs> oh, I see what you're saying. Cut, retake. Yes, look, I'm ready for the next set. I'm ready for the next set. And so. Yes, I don't have to crease it. I did that on purpose. <laughs> you knew that, huh? 
Yes. Okay, I'm going to use this big old turnable. And we're just going to lay it right on here. And the reason that we're going to do this is because we're just going to take our ruler now. This is something that I always do. You want to cut off those tips. See, we get to cut them off now. But I always line up the ruler so that it's straight with the line, the seam. Can you see how that ruler's going along there? Okay, you just cut those off on one side. And then, actually, my table is going to be too hard. Okay, and then I'm just going to turn it around the other side. I thought I would be able to turn my turnable, but i got to get rid of some stuff. Okay, cut off your cute little tips and get rid of them. Okay? So that is always, you start out with the light, and then the next thing is you just need these on the opposite sides. Okay? Cool. Okay. And so look at me. I'm creasing my triangle on one side and on the other. And look, I have these cool folds on my square. <laughs> Was that good? Yeah. So when you flip, you line up the folds and see, okay, and then in the other side, okay, and what is the rule? Let your tips hang out. Oh, you let your tips hang out. Good, Orion, you're paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> How are we ever going to do this one again? This is a Ico. When your husband brought you here to sew, I thought you were real shy. You were. And now look what you can jump up and do. You're doing it for your best friend. No more being shy. Everybody must have an apron like that. Okay, so we did our round one. That was easy, right? Okay, so how do we press our seams? Yep. I, I, haven't, I have to check and see if my iron is hot. There, that's cute, huh? That's going to be your job. Make sure, yep, toward the triangle, okay? And remember I sewed with the triangle on the bottom. Okay, so now we have to square this up. So what am I going to square this up to? It says. Two and a half. Nope. It's a guess. Three and a half. You're going to square up your ruler, and this is the best ruler to use. This is the 12 and a half inch square up ruler. Do you have one? Yes. Good. And did you get it here? Yes. Cool. And if you're doing the little six inch one, the ruler that you need is the is the it's gone already oh it's still on the table it's the nine inch it's actually nine and a half and I just picked these two rulers because you can use these whole rulers these two rulers the whole way through to the end but if you've never used it I can't believe how many people have never used a square up ruler so, um, well, I will, because it's too big on the table, huh? So, I was going to use it to square up, but it's too big. Okay, so, when you use a square up ruler, you always put number one in the upper right corner. And what's really important with this one is that you look at the quarter inch lines, okay? Can you see the quarter inch lines right up against the seams? The quarter inch line on the seam. You put your diagonal line down through. Yeah, and we want to square this up to three and a half inches. So then you go, okay, well, look over here. So from that seam to that line, there's another quarter inch, right? And from here to here. So just get it lined up first. Number one in the upper right corner, if you're right handed. Put the quarter inch lines on those seams. This is pretty typical. And I did it just for you guys, and I'm going to cut off my hand, cutting it like this. Ah, good. So we've got two sides trimmed. 
then you tip up your ruler, but you don't turn it. But you take the corner of your patch you just squared, and you turn it so that it's at the opposite corner. And then this time, put three and a half on the outside edges. Okay? So check again. Oh, it's so perfect. Okay? Quarter inch seam there, quarter inch seam there. Is that good? Yeah. It's perfect. It's perfect. Okay, so then now you just trim off the remaining two sides. You got everything trimmed on all four sides, and your square is perfect. So I think the most important thing is that you want to make sure you have your quarter-inch seams right on each corner. The quarter-inch seam all around. Good! I goes ready! So now... <laughs> okay, so now we're right here like this. We did the first square. Now we're going to pick up the second square. She's so ready. I'm going to put my um, light triangles on either side. And as you can see, my tips are hanging out perfectly. <laughs> We're going to have everybody watching this on the internet. <laughs> yes, Iko. Everybody is going to want to come and meet you, Iko. But see, look. The R rated. Okay, so now what do you want to do? Do you want to just guesstimate your tips or do you want to fold it? You want to fold it? Okay, all right. Okay, if you want to fold it. All right, if you want to fold it, that's okay with me. Okay, so now we don't really have to fold this square, right? You see, that's going to be the center, and that's going to be the center, right? Okay, so flip it right sides together. So, oh, and look at that. See the way it helps to do a colored thread? Do you see how you want your stitches to go right through there like that? Perfect. Am I equal on both sides? Am I equal? Pardon me? <laughs> what did you say? She says, I don't know, stand up. <laughs> oh my gosh. We're going to get um, X rated. You know that this could never air on PBS. They just wouldn't let us do it. <laughs> All right, so how are we doing? So we got it on one side. So if you just swing it around, do the white on the opposite side, line up. You get the idea? It's simple. Okay, I'm going to do one more square up, and then I'm just, we're going to cook. How are we doing, Cindy? It's done, honestly? Oh, I'm excited. Well, get, give me one more minute. Okay, so now, so when you fold it out, see how you want your stitches to be right up along there? Why don't you iron things you put it on? I will. It'll be really good to iron it. <laughs> Thank you for your help, O'Ryan. Is that good? Yeah. It's beautiful. Okay, so just grab your ruler. All right, line up your ruler on your um, seams. Perfect. Tips on two sides. Turn it around. And tips on the last two sides. Ta-da! We're getting a nice little stack there. Okay, so that, that looks really good. That looks really good and so now it's going to go like this and like that is it pretty i love it okay just flip it oh i'm just going to guesstimate i know what my tips are how my tips are supposed to be hanging out i'm going to guesstimate okay and i want my stitching to go right through that little red point right there okay Ta -da! all right 
One more seam. Okay, and be looking at your pattern. What am I supposed to square this up to? This is round two. Four and three quarters. Okay. Four and a half. It should say square, square round two, and what is it? So you have to remember, you're, just be watching that you're on the right round. I hear you talking over here. Did you get it figured out? Is it right? Yes. Good. All right. Look, Orion, look. I'm ironing. <laughs> Open. Look. Is that cute? Very cute. And now I'm going to take my uh, square up ruler. I'm going to put my um, quarter inch line right on my. Oh, it's perfect. Okay, so watch and make sure your diagonal line goes down through there. You want your quarter inch line there and there. And I'm supposed to do to four and three fourths. So four and a half is really hitting right on those seams. Yes! So I'm not using a scant quarter. I'm just using my regular quarter inch seam. Okay, and then just turn it around like this. Okay, and now once again, oh, perfect. So slide it at four and three fourths there, four and three fourths there. The line goes right through the diagonal, quarter inch, quarter inch. Perfect. I like both of these patterns because they really go easy. All right. Perfect. So you just keep on going through the stack, doing exactly the same thing. And till you get up to round five. And now can I use the turnable, Orion? Oh, they know. You keep on going around and round. Mm -hmm. okay. they, got it. they got it. They got it. You're good. They're good, Orion. They're good. They're good. Okay, this is why I put the turnable. Orion, don't you get it? We sell these. <laughs> Here at Quilton today. Okay, one, this is what's really cool, one in the corner. Okay, this should be oversized, let's see. So if this is 12 and a half, what should we, what number should we have right there? Six and a, six and a quarter. Yeah, because half of 12 and a half is six and a quarter. So, oh, I skipped over to page eight. I fast forward, and the diagonal line is going right through the center. That's looking good. Okay, over here and here, we've got a quarter inch everywhere. Well, the reason that I put it on this turnable is because the square up ruler is 12 and a half. You want the block to be 12 and a half. And so I'm just going to take this. See, Orion, isn't this cool? See, wouldn't you like to have one? I didn't pick up and move a thing. And so, ta-da! It's perfect! Is that good? Yeah, the squares would get would start to be really big, because these were um, what was the last size of that last square? It was seven and a half. Yeah, it keeps on getting bigger and bigger. But then, whenever you put all, oh, see when you put the solid square like that in between it, and then you would have the solid squares all around on all sides. 
Very good. I love it. I love this little print too. All right. Pig's tail. Tenderloin. Pork tenderloin. We're going to have this little cooking demonstration. Very fat free. Lean. Lean. What, what part of the pig do you think it came from? The tenderloin. The tenderloin. Uh-huh. The loin. Okay, so I'm going to start cooking something, and okay. then Cindy's going to show how to prepare the meat. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut. I'm going to cut my bacon, and I really like to use my scissors. Scissors are good for everything. Don't you? Don't you love just doing a? Because this this bacon is like all just, it's soft and it goes everywhere and you just can't do it, okay? And Chef Cindy is going to show you how to season your tenderloin for roasting. Okay, she taught me how to get the uh, skin off the garlic. Okay, that's good, right? Okay, on to... Okay. All right. Is that it or is that? Oh, they were going to high. <laughs> we're going too high. Okay. okay. I'm going to take out one more clove of garlic with my muscles. So I'm sure you all have seen this trick on the Food Network, one of my favorite channels. I don't know if Orion can see it, so I'm going to move my knife here. But if you take a knife, and even this one would be better, <laughs> and just smash it. For opening the clove. The peel just comes right off. And then it's really easy to dice up. That was my trick. <laughs> that was a cool trick. That was my trick. <laughs> I know. I said, what am I doing? I don't even know how to take the skin off the garlic, and I'm trying to teach you how to cook. <laughs> Except, I do love this recipe. <laughs> In a hat like this, how could anybody take me seriously? <laughs> okay, so this is cool, so we'll take that out of yeah. there. I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil on our pork. I had a, a paper towel in my pocket knife. Yes, I did too. We're going to have to go like this. Where did our paper towels go? Cool, now this is what I love. Okay. Watch this. From the bacon. They're wet ones? You carry wet ones with you, Brenda? No, she does. I do. Mm. You carry wet ones with you? Oh my gosh. Okay, so that I'm is great. Do a little bit of salt. <laughs> <laughs> what, did, what was that? And you Thank you. Can we see your <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Who went? I didn't know that. Yes. Well, you'll have to start carrying them I in just your car. keep it beside the diapers. I'm <laughs> really good I with just, diapers. I just massage this it. This is the good. Meat. Just massage it in there. Just massaging the steak. Yeah. <laughs> the tenderloin. A little more olive oil. Oh, a little and more olive oil. On the other sides. You want to season all sides of your meat. Is that scrambled tender? No. <laughs> And then before I massage outside, I'm just going to, I'm going to use a little knife. So. I'm going to see how you do this. I'm like. just going to dice up really, really coarse chop the garlic and then rub it in. I'm going to give it a rub, a little garlic rub. I don't think this is getting hot. No, it was really hot earlier. Yeah, but it's not getting hot now. Mm -hmm. Do you think we mm -hmm. blew a fuse? The light's on. The light's on. The light's on. But it's not even cooking. How are we going to taste this if oh, we, we can't go. even cook it? I think it? it's coming. And then I just rub it into the meat and let it get the essence of the garlic. And then as it roasts, the garlic gets really sweet and delicious. And the flavor is infused into the meat. Sweet and delicious. <laughs> is that, that's kind of like playing with Play-Doh, it isn't is it? It is kind of. <laughs> I think it's more fun. <laughs> so what part of the ten, of the pig does the tenderloin come from? I think it comes from the rib section, right behind the ribs. Is that where it comes from? So. And the tenderloin is the part of the joint. Yep. <laughs> it's, your, it's your flanks, El. My flanks. It's the flanks. Okay. It's the flanks. Cool. Like that looks... because we roasted a pig in the desert. Oh, that's right. Oh. <laughs> 
So that's he, it. That's my thing. The whole thing. The whole pig. The whole pig. Cool. So that looks lovely. So that's for the next class. Yeah, so I'm Thank just you. Take it away and let Eleanor have to sit. Okay, and you can take my bacon with me. All right. That's so, Cindy. We have our pork cooking, don't yes, we? Yes, it's resting. It's resting. <laughs> oh, cool. Thank you, Cindy. You're welcome. The juice is for you. So thank you for teaching me how to get the skin off the garlic. I'm thrilled. <laughs> now the next thing is, I had, I had these, um, this, um, you know how you go to the fair and this um, vegematic guy shows you how to use all of these little tools to cut up your onions. Well, I brought mine in. I've only had it for about 20 years. I brought it in and asked Cindy how to use it. <laughs> and she said. She said something about, oh, um, hers look different. And I said, fine, I'm just using a knife because those things scare me. Okay, so sweet onion. Oh, I hear the bacon. No, it was something else. It's starting. I can yeah. see it. Yeah, I can see the smoke. We are never going to get this done. Okay, cook, cook, cook. <laughs> Magic. Okay, so now you need one sweet onion. Yeah. That over your yes. <laughs> <laughs> See if Julia Childs were here, she could take a lesson from me. And I have to tell you, I my mother would would chop everything, and she made everything completely uniform. She did it ex absolutely perfect, and I really admired her, except I have to hurry up and get done and do my quilting. So I chop just like I load my dishwasher. I shovel things into my dishwasher, <laughs> and I just see, that's all I did. It's done. Yeah. Big old chunks. <laughs> <laughs> one sweet, one sweet. So I made this dish for Brian, my friend. I love this because it's like a little step above applesauce. And um, Orion, or Brian said I should chop it finer. <laughs> That's just not my style. That looks good, huh? A chef's knife. So you go like this. You rock it, right? <laughs> I, I'm really afraid of all the knives and everything, so I just kind of go it as fast as I can, like this. This is good. Just chop up your onion. Get it done so you don't cry. Yes, Patty would fussy cut. I like it. That's just fine. Okay, as soon as the bacon cooks, then we're going to stir in the onions until they get nice and brown. I have a feeling we're going to have to finish this off off camera. <laughs> I have two apples. <laughs> they're round and thin. They they're green. <laughs> they are what kind of apples? Don't you love that part of that movie where, who is it? I forget, Meg Ryan, I think. She shows you how you can peel the whole apple in one slice. And I did good. <laughs> yeah. That's not my quilt. I'm so sorry. Eileen, I'm so sorry. I'll clean it for you if I have to. I'm just showing off so that I can do this. Oh my goodness. Oh dear. She's going to move the apple. Here's another one. Okay, so now what do you do with this one? Huh? Did I get one in my hair? Someday I'm going to do a show without a hat on. I don't know. Okay, so then you have to core it, and then you have to slice it thin. Boy, does this sound good.
This smells good, huh? Oh, and so we're going to cut up the apples. And we nearly have the bacon browning. It's actually hot. And so we're going to dump in the onions. Woo! One onion and just stir it until it caramelizes. Do you think it'll caramelize? <laughs> we're trying. I, I know. I have a trailer that we could put it on the stove there. A trailer? Maybe you need to um, pull in the um, trailer right here on the set. <laughs> Wouldn't that work good? A travel trailer? That would work really good. Okay, so this is going to take me a minute while I do this. You get to look at a beautiful quilt. You want to see a beautiful quilt? Okay, so all I'm doing is sharpening my apple. And Orion, you get to show them the beautiful quilt because you're the one that bought it. Yeah. You mean you weren't able to keep it? I bought it from him. He bought it and I bought it from him. So the name of it is called Seth Thomas Rose. Seth Thomas was a clockmaker. And so can you look and see how, how um, the, the, the rose actually looks like it has numbers on a clock? Seth Thomas Rose. Well, the reason that I brought you this one, okay, could you come, Marilyn, behind? Okay. Take the, this is the mountain mist pattern. Okay. Our pig's tail was um, a mountain mist pattern. Which one? And that one happens to be morning glory. The, the, my mountain mist pattern is inside for morning glory. And the reason I brought you the mountain mist pattern is because they, they put all these great, um, Quilting photographs inside. Uh, Look. Morning glory's on there. No, it's uh, the whole inside. Open it up. Turn it over. Ah. ah. But the quilting is so exquisite on this quilt, and I wanted you to see how they actually illustrated the quilting lines that are on that quilt on that pattern. And they're exactly like it. Isn't it beautiful, though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it's the mountain mist pattern, and I think that's from like 1931 or so. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's hand quilted. Pardon me? It's hand quilted. It's hand quilted, absolutely. It's hand quilted. Um, gosh, it's... Um, what did you pay for that one? I bought that one a long time ago. And I actually laundered it a lot. I, I launder most of my quilts. But it brings up the quilting in it. Oh, yes, Orion. Right, go down by your right hand and go down. And see how it's worn? It's just really worn out. Well, it would be great if it had a grandpa's whisker cloth on it. The grandpa's whisker cloth. And I forgot to bring it with me. The whisker cloth. The whisker cloth is an extra piece of fabric that you sew on the top of the finished quilt so that every time when Grandpa is in bed and he grabs hold of the, the cloth and he pulls it up under his chin, his whiskers wear out the quilt. <coughs> and so you cover it. <coughs> Notice how I'm coughing all right. I'm sorry. Not in my hands. <laughs> Huh? So I learned, I'm learning. <laughs> yes, from my grandkids. But anyhow, the whisker cloth would have protected that quilt. And then when Grandpa was gone, you just remove the whisker cloth. And what is underneath is still beautiful. Oh. Ah, one time when I was doing my program, I screwed up and called it Grandma's Whiskers Cloth. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, it's doing good. Okay. 
So we're, this is smelling really good, isn't it? And, I, and did you notice how your pattern says to make nice, thin, even slivers? Didn't it say that? Make nice, even slivers? Notice how I have quickly chopped these apples up. They're just fine. <laughs> Apple juice. Apple juice. Pure, natural, really high in sugar. I say no, it's, it's, um, it says that no sugar added. Bowl. <laughs> it's so full of sugar. It's so full of sugar, but anyhow, it is poor. It is pure and natural. And so Cindy and I discussed this. I said, well, I'm supposed to reduce the apple juice so it kind of gets thick, you know, a little thick. And she said, cornstarch will work great. Yeah. Don't you agree? Yes. So if you want, you could add just a little cornstarch. And I know I have a wooden spoon. Ah, oh, yes. Spoon. Okay, cornstarch. Don't worry, we're going to do more quilting here. She said, how much, Cindy? Not too much? Probably. There. That's perfect. Uh, just a little bit more. Okay. That's a lot of apple juice. Okay, we're doing good. Now, you guys, okay, this is looking very nice and crystallized. I think this caramelized. is caramelized. It's looking good, Orion. What do you think? It's looking good. And now we're going to add one cup of apple juice. Ooh. And now we'll find out if this is going to cook. And then we're going to add... Are what kind of apples? Granny. Granny Smith. I don't know why they say Granny Smith. It's they're kind of they're not as sweet. I really like a gala. But anyhow, see how I nicely chopped those apples. That was so fun. She took the seeds from Australia. Is that why you do Granny Smith? They hold their shape. They'd turn it into applesauce. And so pork and applesauce is really good. Okay, I think that's really good. So, oh my goodness. We forgot one ingredient. Whoops. <laughs> Where did that come from? And it says how much? That was very good. That looks good. That looks good. And so now you're just going to let this sit. And, and raisins. A handful. A handful. But that raisins are at the end. Oh, you don't add them No, you don't put them in now. You put them in, you put them in at the end. Okay? All right. And oh. now if we had a real oven here, we could pull one out. Okay. So, now we're going to do broken dishes. Broken dishes. I love broken dishes. I, lo I love both of these blocks. Broken dishes. Are you ready for broken dishes? I said, well, what am I going to do for broken dishes? And somebody was so clever, they said I should just throw a dish over my shoulder and break it. But I decided not to. <laughs> but isn't that fun? That's broken dishes right here. It's so beautiful. It and pick out one center color. And then... You pick out four dishes around, or four dishes, <laughs> four different colors around the outside edge. So one color in the middle, a, a multi-print, 
and then four different colors. I pulled the yellow out of here. I pulled the pink and the little green and all of the colors. And they just have all different values. This is the 12 inch block and this is the six inch. Aww, isn't that cute? So somebody made a mess here. So now, is that too high if I put that one? Is that good? And here is the six one beside it. Is that cute? Aren't they cute? I love them. A couple of them. And then Teresa did the um, batiks. Very cute, but I think there's one. There's one missing. I don't see. I don't see the little six inch. But anyhow, I, the reason that I put these together is the center is very similar to sew together. So we really. Let me see. Teresa has all of this already done, and let me put it right here. So let's just start out with the center. And it's already done. You recognize it? Yeah. Exactly. It looks, it looks exactly the same way. It's done exactly the same way. So for the background, these are just two four-inch squares. The background, the center starts out as a four-and-a-half-inch square. And then... It goes through how to cut each one of the four fabrics right down along there. So, um, the background is four inch squares, and the center is four and a half inches square. And that's the. Am I right? Oh, good. Oh, thank you. You can't read. Good. <laughs> Okay, so you start out and you do exactly the same thing. Oh, no! You thought you weren't going to have to let your tips hang out, but we have to do that, Ico, one more time. <laughs> we have to have our equal tips hanging out. One, two, three, equal! <laughs> And you won't have to I do that. You, you don't have to do that again. Okay, so these these are really big big tips hanging out, aren't they? They're really big tips hanging out on both sides, and it's exactly the same. So we've got the, both of them on both sides, and then we have to square them up. And so this very center on the six on the 12 inch block is squaring round one on page 11. Squaring round one on page 11. And what is the measurement? Six and one eight. Six and one eight. Oh, this is gonna be perfect. Six and one eight. This looks good. It looks very good. Six and one eight. Okay, because so now I'm putting the diagonal line down through the middle. I'm putting the quarter inch line right on those seams, right? And I'm gonna just trim the right and the top. Whoops. Okay. And then if you have this cool tool that they buy here, Orion. <laughs> I'm going to turn them around, and now that it's six and an eighth, see how I have to put six and one eighth on the bottom and left, six and one eighth. I have the quarter inch seam right here. This is good, and a quarter inch seam right there. Perfect? Perfecto. Perfecto. Looking good. Very same thing. That's why you should do these on the same day. 
So you remember the pig's tail in this one. Okay, this is good. I like this. Okay, so now these are all four colors, and they are five and a fourth inches. One, two, three, four. Okay, so whoops, one more, the fourth one. So what I did was pull out the dark blue, the yellow, the red, right out of that. And this one's kind of unrelated, but it works, huh? Purple. So those all come from that center flower. These are all five and a fourth inches. And so you just take five, five and an eighth. Now you're listening, Becky. Now I can read. Now you can read, and you were absolutely right. Okay, so you just take and you cut these on one diagonal. And I'm on page 11. You with me? Yes. Page 11. Doo -doo. This is good. OK. And so it says to set one stack aside. Right now, you just need one triangle. OK? And we're going to call this number one. Let me see. We're going to call this number one, and we're going to call this number two. Does that look good? Is that pretty? I really like that. Okay, you want me to be sewing? Or do you get it? You get it? And then you take these, and that's three, and that's four. Uh, oh, yeah, he just put one and two. He could have put three and four on there. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Wow. Look how magical it is. Is that good? And that's exactly the same. Is that beautiful? Ooh, it's lovely. I love it. I, I like these with all of the multicolors in them because that way um, you get to use all of your scraps. And uh, you press the triangles away, exactly the same lesson, and this would be round two. Yeah? Okay, so turn to round two on page 12. Okay. Look at this. I like it. And what am I squaring this up to? Oh my gosh. This is perfect. Eight and a half. Diagonal line down through the center. Quarter inch there, quarter inch there. What's half of eight and a half? So look, there's four and a quarter there and there. Ah, good. <laughs> Teresa did such a good job. So just trim off two sides. I'm so glad you got this all done, Teresa. You get to wear the princess, the Irish princess, after this is all over. OK, that's good. So that's two sides. So remember, you tip the ruler, but you don't turn your ruler, but you turn your block, right? Woo! So now you put what measurement on the outside edge? Eight and a half. This is perfect. This is a lovely. So eight and a half, right along there, quarter inch there, quarter inch there. Okay? And just trim it. Ta da! I think I could get a new blade. I think I need one. You could sharpen it. That's perfect. That's perfect. That's perfect. That's a very beautiful center. Okay, so now, oh, look, Teresa did this really cool. So now we have to come to um, our triangle squares in the corners. Let me show you. So this is the whole center, 
But now do you see these little triangle squares there? Off of each one, the triangle. So you have the same four colors. The same four colors is actually for a 12 inch block. It is three inch squares, right sides together. Oh, perfect. <gasps> okay, three inch squares of all four on the bottom, right side up. Background, right sides together to it. Um, and Teresa likes the sandpaper mat. And it really helps if you put it on there, then it doesn't shift. And I think we sell these even. This is the coolest little um, tool because you can put them right on, you can put your patches right on here. And if you want to carry them someplace, you just cover them like that. Ta-da! Ta-da! Good? Okay, so now that um, there are all the diagonal lines are marked, then we need to take and we need to sew a quarter inch seam on both sides. Okay? <clears throat> quarter inch seam, how are we doing? Do you think our pig is cooking? I mean, our apples are cooking. <laughs> okay, so you are going to sew a quarter inch seam on both sides, and I'm just going to do one of them. Because they're all done exactly like that, right? And did I show you how to use the magnificent triangle square up ruler. Did I show you this already? Not today. Not today. But um, now we've sewn a quarter inch seam on both sides and then we're just going to cut it in half. And we have two cute little ones. You don't have to do this one, Aiko. <laughs> You have big ones and I have cute little ones. <laughs> We're going to be in trouble. We're going to get kicked off. Okay, so these are squared to two and a half inches for the 12. So you put the two and a half inch line on your stitches. Have you all seen this already? Even the new people? Last month? Oh, cool. So I just trimmed on one side, and then I just go ahead, and I cut these cute little tips off on both sides. And then you just turn it over and open and press into it. Isn't that sweet? Mm -hmm. That is just so sweet. So sweet. And I have an iron that I can use. But we, it turned off, so I'm just pretending. <laughs> Whoops. Ooh, nice. All right. So now, Teresa did such a good job laying this all out for me. I'm just shifting them. So now, we'll take this off. Oh, like that. Wow. So, we put our triangle squares off of each color. That's good, huh? The triangle squares. But there's one part we didn't cut yet. The corners. The corners. And I didn't want to be wasteful of this triangle that you didn't need. Ah! Are you excited about that? And there's a little picture right there that says you just take your triangles and you like it. And so you don't waste everything. You just go ahead and cut a two and a half inch square for your corners. Huh. Nice. This you keep these you get rid of. 
and you see that these are going to go right in the corners. Two and a half inch squares all around. So that really, that makes the whole block, that's all of the pieces for the whole block. It is an explosion that you have right in your paper. Are, we with the, are you with me? Yes. It's easy, right? Yes. And there's no funky matching. That's what I really like. Oh, I'm nearly done, Cindy. I'm nearly done. Tell Melissa. Okay, this is the only thing that might be a little hard is turn the page because this unit, you have to sew together. This unit with the um, pieced triangle or piece square with a rectangle. And these guys get flipped right sides together. And if you want to, you can just go and flip them all into the middle. Okay? Just flip them all into the middle. And you just sew, assembly line sew all these together. Okay? So, is that easy? Yes. So, if we pick this one up and this one up. And this one up, and this one up. All right? And so they're all lined up. They're all perfect. So then you just assembly line sew these pieces down. And what's really important, what, what did we just square that center up to? Do you remember? Eight and a half. Okay. This piece has to be eight and a half inches. To well, no, we're, we... Okay, so um, what we just squared up right now was eight and a half. So the only way this whole block is going to fit together is if this unit, when you open it up, is now eight and a half. A ooh, it's perfect. It's perfect. It's perfect. And so make sure that you get those units so they fit all around the outside edge. And so all of those pieces on there, let's see if I can get them all back like I pieced them. Like this and like this and this. If you just look at the colors, it will all go together, right? Yes. yes. And one more right here. All right. And that's your block. Ta da! It's beautiful. I love it. It's just beautiful. Oh my goodness! We get to have. Our tenderloin, our pig tenderloin. The pig is here. <laughs> oh, my gosh. oh, she flew right in. Are you going to help us serve? She's paid really well to do this. Isn't she cute? All right, so you can fly back to Cindy, and thank